So today we're making spaghetti with zucchini. It's the dead of summer and zucchinis are in season. I'm growing one outside, they're all over the farmer's market, and it made me think of making this amazing pasta dish called spaghetti alla Nerano, or spaghetti and zucchini, pasta and zucchini. It's made with fried zucchinis, sliced real thin, provolone, a special kind of provolone, but we don't really get that provolone here in America, so we're gonna use regular provolone imported from Italy. I got some fresh basil, some garlic, and some zucchini flour. It sort of builds, again, on a lot of the things we know. If you can make like cacio pepe or any of those dishes, you're gonna be able to make this, and it's another way to add vegetables into your pasta regimen, and to just widen your scope on real authentic Italian pasta. So let's just jump right into it. Now the big thing here is the, the cheese. The provolone that is traditionally used in this recipe is called provolone del monaco. And what it is, is just like mozzarella, provolone is like a, is a cheese where the, the curds are stretched and then formed back into a, a ball of cheese. However, the difference is with provolone, it's usually hung to age. So when I got this, this was a ball and had string around it and you know, they hang it and they age it. Delmonico provolone is just aged much longer than something like this, which is like a softer, younger provolone. And in America, this is what we can really find. Go out and find yourself an imported provolone. It doesn't have to be Delmonico, although it's just better if you can find it. I haven't been able to find it. It's kind of hard to find in America, so. You could also use cacio cavallo. So we're just gonna grate this up, maybe a quarter pound. I'm gonna make one serving of pasta because I'm only one person today. I've got some zucchini flour, which I've been, I have grown outside and I got plenty of flowers growing, so I figured I might as well use it as a garnish. We're just not gonna, we're not gonna fry it today. We're just gonna use the fresh leaves, which are just like really delicious. I got some fresh basil from my garden. Went out there and I pruned it. Like I showed you in the last video, properly pruned it so it grows back more. And uh, we're gonna garnish with the basil and the zucchini flour. And we also use Parmesan in this. I don't have a lot of Parmesan. I've got new Parmesan. So just a public safety announcement on Parmesan, a reminder on how you should always grate it. If you go to your cheese shop and they give you it in this paper, keep it in this paper. It's a specially designed paper. It allows the cheese to breathe. This is the best way to store cheese. Always get the real stuff. And then whenever grating cheese for pasta, we're gonna grate it on this one. You know, you don't really have to. This is the best one I found for me, the best texture that I like. A lot of people might use this one, but for me, this is the best way. It's gonna grate it the finest and it's gonna allow it to melt easiest, so. That's enough for this dish, so I'm just gonna put it back into the paper like this. No idea how they actually fold it, so I'm just gonna make it work like that. And now, for the provolone, I'm not gonna use that same grater, I'm gonna use this thinner one right here. That should be plenty. I know you want amounts, but I just eyeball it. And so I, what I do is, I just make sure there's no big clumps. The big clumps are gonna be hard to melt in. So I'm just trying to break up any big clumps so they don't clump up in the pasta. But that looks good, I'm gonna set that aside. The aged provolone is gonna be a little less wet, so you're not gonna have that clumping issue there. So with the younger stuff, you gotta be careful with that. So here we have our two cheeses. We just need to cut our zucchini and slice our garlic. And we don't wanna cut them too thin. When they fry, they will shrink up a little bit. So I really wanna get a nice, cut that end off, thick piece like that. Now these are nice baby zucchini from the farmer's market. If you have bigger ones, you're gonna need maybe like a little bit less, but I'm using four of these small ones and let's see how that goes. Okay. 
Or is that I like to add a little red chili pepper? There you have it, we have our two cheeses. What I'm using the Parmesan for is to create that initial creamy base with the pasta water and the oil and zucchini and the garlic. Once I've seen I can have like a little bit of a stable base, like a cacio pepe stage kind of thing, I'm gonna start to add the provolone cheese and then that's gonna give it that extra creaminess at the end. But you wanna avoid little clumps like that, otherwise it's gonna clump up in the sauce. So we're just gonna put a, little, a lot of love into it. We're gonna make it beautiful. We're gonna go on over to the stove and get this done. Get a large pan on medium to medium high heat, the biggest one you've got if you wanna fry them all in one batch. Once it's hot, add about a half cup of olive oil and then toss in one tester zucchini piece. Once it starts sizzling, add the rest of the zucchini if you can fit it all in one shot. Otherwise, do it in batches. You just wanna fry them all flipping occasionally until they've got a nice golden brown color going on all the zucchini pieces. You wanna constantly be managing the heat. If it's too hot, lower it. If it's too low, bump it up. And once they're all browned, then drop the pasta into some salty water and start to get that cooking. Then you can shut the heat off on the zucchini and transfer them to a paper towel lined plate and let them dry for a minute. Strain off most of that oil except for a little bit. You can save that olive oil and reuse it. Reserve some zucchini for some garnish. Now let that pasta cook until it's a few minutes away from being done. Then get the pan back on the heat, add the garlic and the red chili flake, and saute until it starts to brown slightly. Then add the zucchini back to the garlic and oil. This is now your chance to infuse that zucchini with that garlic flavor. Once the pasta is a couple minutes away from being perfectly al dente, shut the heat off of the zucchini and oil. Then add the pasta to the pan along with a couple ladles of the pasta water. Turn the heat back on. Keep working in that pasta water until the pasta cooks till al dente. Once the pasta is just about al dente, you're gonna shut the heat off and give the pan time to cool before adding cheese. And make sure that there's enough moisture in the form of the pasta water so that when you add the cheese, it's able to melt into something. The first cheese we're gonna add is the Parmesan. We're gonna mix it in really well and emulsify it like we would a cacio pepe. This is gonna create a nice base for the provolone to melt into. So once you see it get nice and creamy, then start to melt in the provolone in the exact same way as the Parmesan. Use the pasta water as needed to control the consistency of the sauce, knowing as it cools, it will thicken. So you always want it a little looser in the pan, knowing it's gonna thicken in the plate. This dish, like cacio pepe and a lot of these other sauces, they're designed to be eaten right away. So what my struggle always is, is getting it to the right consistency, plating it, doing my photo shoot, and having it all maintain the same look without it kind of thickening up or anything. But the pasta is phenomenal. The flowers in there, you could taste. When you get that dark color on the zucchini, it really takes flavor to another level. Right now, this is one of my favorite zucchini recipes. I got it growing in the backyard. 
I know a lot of you have it growing or you're all shopping at farmer's markets eating fresh. So the next time you got some ripe zucchini, give this one a shot. Thanks to my patrons scrolling up on the screen. Appreciate you all. If you wanna become a patron, there's a link down below and uh, a little link on the screen right now. I would really appreciate the support. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.